Hello friends, welcome to Abacus Acumen. Anyone who want to learn Abacus for finite element analysis, he or she can start with building and solving simple linear static problems. To help you, we prepared this short and effective video. So what you get to know by watching this video? So first uh, point I will try to cover a fundamentals on how a solver solves a linear analysis using finite element method. So I want to keep it very short, two to three pages and the abacus input file overview for linear static simulation the keyword that is star st static which is very vital to for defining a linear static simulation step once we we have all this definition done like node element material properties shell properties we need to invoke output request into a deck file we will be interested to see the reaction force at constant nodes that also I'll cover in this video and finally we'll have a quick look at the output file generated by Abacus Solver. Before jumping and start learning FEA tool we need to have some fundamentals about finite element analysis. For sure here I don't want to sound like your professor and going through equation rigorously so I want to keep it very simple and in I will try to make you very comfortable by giving you some background about this fundamentals. So this is a simple uh, stress strain core for a material and this is quite familiar to you guys. We have this linear curve that is for linear analysis. We, we are following this linear curve in blue line and then it, this is a, a typical red line shows a material behavior which is yielding. When we discuss about linear static analysis it follows the linear stress strain curve so it is it follows the this blue line and it obeys the hooke's law where stress is directly proportional to strain when we conduct a linear static analysis we have to verify that all the stresses what we generate are below yield or ultimate limit stress limit then only the the results will be meaningful and then the solver solve this simulation in one step Okay, so it is not going to, when you apply say 100 Newton, it will directly apply 100 Newton and then solve at once using preparing a global stiffness matrix. Okay, and then well, while doing this solution or creating a solution, a solver applies this equilibrium conditions like all forces equal to zero, it is, and the all moments equal to zero. So this is something we learned in our mechanics. Let's discuss equation of motion. So this is very famous uh, equation that we have up in times we come across this equation. So that is uh, mass and then acceleration plus we have this velocity, a damping factor and then st stiffness, displacement which is equal to external force. So when we discuss about linear static analysis we are not considering inertia effect and a damping effect so in, in linear static simulation involves only the, the stiffness part and the displacement part which is equal to external force so for equilibrium condition we need to have this external force that is F is equal to internal resistance that is a KU as long as this equation is satisfied your system is in equilibrium so when we have this uh, F minus KU you can simply rearrange this which is equal to zero so we are solving for this when a system is in equilibrium when we have there is all the forces and the moments are equal to zero then that condition is satisfied then we have a solution in hand okay I will give you a simple example how the solver solves a given finite element problem okay so I'm here I will consider only a 1D freedom 1D rod element which has a single degree of freedom that is in X direction here there are two elements what I'm considering and on a one edge of the element is say it is fixed and we have this uh, a rod uh, let's say it's a step rod there are two different cross sections A1 and A2 and it has length as also L1 and L2 and at the end of this uh, rod we are applying a force of say 50 Newton and when you define this problem into a finite element environment so what it does is it create a stiffness matrix for each of these elements like element number one okay this is in blue uh, font 
and then blue color and this is element number two okay for element number one that is this one we have we have this uh, stiffness matrix that is ea1 by l1 and 1 minus 1 so this is a matrix minus 1 my 1 so this is a standard a matrix which accounts for the coordinates of the element and e is nothing but your mod elastic modulus we have this a1 that is a cross section of this element 1 and l1 is the length of this uh, this first element and similarly it will create another stiffness matrix that is k2 so k2 has all the same in, uh, information only you have the changes is the cross section area is different and then the length may also is, is also different and we have this uh, coordinates of this uh, element and once we have these two elements matrix written individually so what it does is it will combine that is k1 plus k2 and makes a global prepare a global matrix okay so when we have and this global matrix we call it as a stiffness matrix a stiffness matrix essentially contains modulus that is a material property and then followed by geometric stiffness geometric details so we have this geometric stiffness so if you see a1 by l1 and this followed by this matrix this is accounting for the geometric stiffness and the e is coming from your material property okay so once we have this global stiffness prepared it will arrange in such a way that ku is equal to f so this is a global stiffness matrix that is kg and you have u1 u2 u3 that is a, a displacement at each nodes so the displacement at node 1 displacement that is u1 this is u2 at uh, node 2 and u3 is displacement at node 3 and followed by f1 f2 f3 similarly f1 that is a force which is at node 1 f2 is a force node at node 2 and f3 is a force at node 3 so when we when we go back and we see how what are the boundary conditions we have so one is the displacement that is we are fixing this edge so u1 the displacement of node 1 is 0 there is no displacement because we are fixing it and we have some u2 that is displacement u2 that is at node 2 and we have u3 that is displacement at node 3 so this is something we have to get it from the equation where by solving the equation and then we also have force matrix so force matrix f1 is we don't know what is f1 we don't know what is f2 but we know the f3 that is 50 that is the input for us that is 50 newton so same thing has been defined over here we have this kg matrix that is nothing but uh, that we are combining a uh, two element uh, stiffness matrix to make this global stiffness matrix and we have this uh, displacement matrix that is at u1 we are fixing it so it is 0 u2 we have this node 2 display, uh, displacement and u3 similarly the other there is no forces at node 1 and node 2 we are applying a positive 50 newton load that is next x direction so it, it, it we are seeing 50 over here so when we solve this in a matrix form we have to get the displacement so this particular matrix that is u is equal to f kg inverse when we solve this matrix we will get a output that is u2 and u3 displacement those are called fundamental outputs using this u2 and u3 that is a displacement vectors or displacement values one can calculate the strain that is element strain which is nothing but u2 minus u1 divided by l1 and then we have similarly we can calculate element strain for uh, L, uh, uh, second element that is element 2 and these are called a derived output because you, you are deriving this output by knowing the fundamental output that is displacement at each nodes and then we need to finally we need to calculate the element stress that is something we are always interested to see so how the element stress is calculated we have this say sigma 1 and it's nothing but we know the modulus so that is a strain that is strain 1 so similarly we can calculate the sigma 2 that is a stress at element 2 in real scenario any given structure will have more than say two elements the number of nodes will also be high to just for understanding we will keep a degree of freedom one only that is single and example we have this given structure as seven elements and say eight nodes associated to those seven elements and each node have one degree of freedom so total degree of freedom is is total eight for this problem when we 
build global stiffness matrix which will be of the order of 8 by 8 and we can one can solve this 8 by 8 matrix and calculate the displacement followed by strain and the stress manually but it is more error prone so how the practical examples or problems look like in practical example there will be more number of elements there will be associated nodes will be very high and then the degree of freedom will be more than one say three or six when you're using solid element or cell elements so in that case we are our global matrix size becomes bigger bigger and bigger so if you see this example we have some shell elements there are say 20 elements we have 33 nodes associated to those elements and totally we have our degree of freedom is 198 so 198 is nothing but if you multiply this 33 number of nodes and each node has 6 degree of freedom okay this is cell elements that is 3 displacement 3 rotation so 33 into 6 is nothing but your total degree of freedom is 198 okay when we have this uh, global stiffness matrix for each these elements like k1 k2 k3 it prepares and up to kn say that is a k20 and once we combine this k1 k2 k3 all this uh, each element matrix stiffness matrix to build a global stiffness matrix the order of that global stiffness matrix will be 198 by 198 that is and this means that we need to solve this 198 equation okay say manually but is it possible to do manually because bigger the matrix size it will be difficult for us to solve manually so here we have we can use the computational power and also the tools like abacus to help to help us to solve this uh, this problem at one go in a, maybe in a fraction of seconds i hope you understood uh, how this uh, finite element equations are handled by solver in the background and then it gives uh, a result in terms of uh, nodal displacement strains and then followed by element stresses Thank you for watching this video. You can write to us for any feedback and queries on abacusacumen.gmail.com and don't forget to like us our YouTube channel and also our Facebook page. You can find a next video that is part 2 on input deck overview for linear static analysis. Thank you. Bye bye.